What's up everyone, thank you for tuning in. So today I'm gonna to be installing this catch can on the A20 and the Accord. So I'm primarily gonna be focusing on just the installation of the catch can onto the A20 itself. I'm not gonna be dwelling too much into the knowledge of like reasonings and what an oil catch can can do. I feel there's a lot more uh, appropriate people on YouTube as well as other sources that can help provide more in-depth information that I feel that I couldn't provide as good as they could. So I'll leave some links in the description on that for you guys to help better your knowledge on what an oil catch can can do, benefits and so on and so forth, ways of running it, closed system, open system, bending the atmosphere, uh, a whole bunch of different ways you can run it. But um, to clarify, if you're running an OEM setup, it's not a necessity, but it definitely you know isn't a detriment to have one. Uh, NA builds definitely isn't really a necessity, but again, like it definitely does, if you're going to be spending money on getting some high horsepower or, or you know higher than stock horsepower out of NA setup, then you're not going to be losing anything from adding a oil catch can. I personally would. And then turbo setups definitely add a catch can. You are going to have increased crank case crankcase pressure so definitely going to be a must um so basically the reason why i'm doing this now is because i broke the pcv valve on this when i installed the b16 intake manifold and i kind of jerry-rigged it to make it work and it lasted a lot longer than i thought and now basically gave way and it's leaking oil so it's either i get a replacement an oem replacement for it or i just go the route that i'm doing now which is basically oil catch can with 10 an fittings a 10 an plug for the uh, block plug designated for a d16 block it'll fit it'll work i'm gonna be running a 10 an hose off that going into the oil catch can and i'm not going to be as of right now i'm not going to be running anything from the valve cover to that catch can it's basically a two inlet or one inlet one outlet either or and uh, has a breather up top to vent to atmosphere so that's how we're going to do it for right now. If I can find a way or find a hose big enough to run it from the valve cover to that catch can to have a uh, crank case, you know, pressure relief from the valve cover as well as the block, then hopefully, you know, it'll be done. But I don't think it will be on this video, but who knows. Okay, so before we start, I'm going to go talk about this old catch can. Yeah, it's my messy workbench table thing. <laughs> um, you know, I, I wish it was a lot cleaner, but hey, it's, a, what do you, it's, a, it's the man cave, okay? <laughs> so, here's the oil catch can. I picked this up for about uh, 30 bucks on Amazon. It's definitely a lot bigger than I thought it would be. That's what she said. Because um, for those of you that have got, for those of you who have bought um, reasonably priced catch cans on eBay or Amazon or whatnot, usually the picture tends to portray them a lot bigger than they actually are when you guys receive them. And yeah, this name of the company, Evil Energy. I'm guarantee you it's some Chinese brand. Well, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so let's look at it. I'm not a welder, so I can't really make too much judgment calls on welding, but everything seems sealed. There is one complaint that I have. So basically, this is where the breather would go up top here, which is actually surprisingly a pretty big breather for what it is. Yeah, I think it's pretty good, good size breather. So that just goes up top right here. Inlet outlet, or both of them can be used as inlets. Has mounting tabs on it, welded on, which is pretty nice. My one complaint about this thing so far, I don't know if you guys, the camera can pick this up. So, nah, I doubt it's gonna pick it up. Here, if it can't, I'll just explain it. Hopefully you guys trust me on it. So you, you guys see anything missing? If you don't, this is what's missing. There is no internal baffling. There's no filter or anything of you know any any sort. So that's not good, especially if you're going to be running it through a closed system. Which, if you guys do not know what that is, it would basically be. So let's just say, let's just say I'm, this is the inlet. You're going to be having a hose from this, hypothetically speaking, going from the valve cover to this, and then this, the outlet goes to you know the intake piping or the intake manifold itself to where basically it sucks in air through this runs through a filter uh basically separates the oil and water and stuff with the air and then you get clean air and you get less oil and gunk in your intake manifold so the way i'm going to run this none of that stuff is going to be being recycled through the intake at all now here's the negative thing oh here's a better view yeah there's nothing in there. there's no baffling so 
Monkey Wrenching, Monkey Mike. I see, he did a video a while back, which I thought was pretty cool. So he got a $10 eBay cheap Chinese made catch can. And the construction of it was pretty good, just like this one, but it too had no internal baffling. Now, the cool thing about his $10 one is you can actually unscrew it halfway and you can, you know, get to the whole thing. This one is just one solid construction, so I'm gonna have a little bit harder time. So he made his own baffling, kinda. He used this stuff, scotch Sprite, stainless steel scrubbing pads, and he basically just put them in. So I'll put a link to that video too if you guys are interested in checking that out. Now, obviously, guys, there's cash cans that run anywhere from like 10 bucks to like 300, if not more, depending on some, and you know, some of them, you know, you get what you pay for. Some of them you don't, you know, so I'm not one to judge on that. All I know is like, I feel like I'm not running a crazy high horsepower. When I mean high horsepower, I'm making like, I'm talking like quadruple dig digits in horsepower to be where, um, worrying about crankcase, um, pressures is a huge, is, is something I'm going to have you know, a huge issue with on the horizon. So basically I'm just going to be putting this stuff inside here and basically the oil, water, all that stuff is going to go through here and trickle down. All this stuff is going to catch it. And yeah, but I'm not really too worried about it. I said, I'm just going to put it in here just to have it just in case maybe one day I want to run a closed system. But uh, as I said, I'm going to be running this as an open system, venting the atmosphere and you know, just why not? <laughs> So the only, the only thing that's gonna suck is gonna be putting this in here because the drainage in the bottom right here, this drainage hole is gonna be the only way I'm gonna be putting it in there. So I'm gonna do that first and then we'll move on to the next step. So I got one in there now, I'm working on the second one. I might end up using uh, all three that came with the scotch Bright um, package. It's kind of time consuming, but it's cool. Doing this process kind of reminds me of wound packing for those of you guys that know what that is in the medical field. I talk about it more, but I am not medically qualified to talk about it. Well, it's not really a secret. I just, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say any misinformation because this is something that can definitely be like a life or death <laughs> situation to where if this is done incorrectly and I describe it to you wrong, then... I don't want to be held liable. So, any guys interested in checking out what wound packing is, go check that out. Okay, so before I start getting at this, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the intake manifold. Um, so, depending on your setup, whether if you're running a carbureted or fuel injected setup and you still have the OEM intake manifolds, this may be a little bit um, much more difficult or uh, easier for you. Um, I would assume it would be easier if you had the uh, carbureted intake manifold if you did the Weber or stuff and you don't have all the vacuum lines running everywhere it might be a little bit easier um, you may still need to take it off I contemplated going from underneath the car to see if I can even take the black box off and access it and it, the oil filter being there it would just be a pain in the ass I mean if the oil filter was off if you were doing this in the middle of an oil change it might be doable but um, don't take my word on it so right now I'm gonna pretty much take the intake manifold off and then I'll show you guys uh, from there but just real quick so this right here is what's going to the PC, PCB valve. Let's see if I can get it on camera. If you guys can even see the black box from here. Yeah, come on, focus. Yep. So that thing right there is the black box. That's where this hose is going to. So I need to take all this stuff off, access to that, and then pull it off. Okay, and take manifold off. You just have to two by four prying it up right now. So. There is the black box right there. So this black box is actually being held by two 10 millimeter bolts, one there, one right there. Gotta lift this and there's another hose down there connected to it. I believe that it leads into the oil pan, which I wasn't expecting, but figured it out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this off right now. Okay, so I got it. Unscrew those two 10 millimeter, or yeah, 10 millimeter bolts. So basically, once you loosen those up, you just pull it out, and it works. Basically, it just pretty much just plunges in. You can see, so that um, line right there is going to the uh, oil pan, I believe. Um, I'm gonna try to basically take it off, plug it off. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to get it on camera. Plug it off on that bend right there. 
is that hose goes over that. So I'm gonna have to scrounge around and see if I can find a uh, plug big enough to cap that off. But yeah, I'm gonna continue to take that box off and then put the AN fitting on. Okay, so I am underneath the car. This is kind of tricky filming, but I'll do my best. So this is this where the black box is right there. And it is indeed going to the oil pan. And then it's just a hose, basically just, obviously it'll probably be a little bit easier just getting these hose clamps maneuvered where they need to be to be able to remove the hose before attacking the black box. So, yep, just once you pull this hose off, just make sure to plug it and it should be good to go. Okay, that pipe that leads into the oil pan is capped off. I just put a hose clamp there just to uh, better safe than sorry. Uh, I'm sure there's not enough pressure in the oil pan that will build up enough pressure to blow that cap off. But, you know, as I said, better safe than sorry. Okay, so the black box that's OEM is on the left. And then the fitting, the 10 AN fitting I'm going to be putting on is on the right. So I got this off Amazon for about like 10 bucks. Uh, I think the company's called like Duo Connor, something like that. I'll, I'll put in the links in the description below. So here's the part that slips into that hole in the back of the block. And then here's the D16 spec. So there you go, it'll fit in. Um, pretty cool thing about this actually, uh, if I'm already breaking it. <laughs> um, it's cool that this comes actually with uh, two O-rings which is already, in my opinion, far more superior than this design. So good seal is gonna be guaranteed, hopefully. This also came with this, and it looks like a tool. Kinda is, but the thing about this, and I'll show you when I install it. So those two 10 millimeter um, bolts that, were hold, that was holding this in place, hopefully, cause this is set up for a D16, I hope this will work, but um, basically what this is trying to do is probably gonna be, or what is gonna be is just to, once this is in the block, lock in place so i'm pretty sure i'm going to be using only this bolt right here to lock this in place to keep it from being pushed out so let's put it on okay so for reference this is where it's going to go to right here in this hole right here in the back of the block just for reference so make sure that everything in here is clean nothing is you know in there and then also before you put the fitting on on those o-rings i'm just going to put a dab of oil around them just to make a better seal so kind of the same thing if you guys ever Doing oil changes and done the uh, oil filter, I always like to put a little film of oil around the seal. And yeah, so let's go. The 10 AN fitting is on. So a couple key notes, at least for this one that I got. So I had to take off the uh, O-rings that actually this plug came with because they were a little bit too big and I couldn't actually uh, plug it in. So I had a O-ring kit and I just pretty much sized it down. So once I sized those down, it was easy to plug in. And then as for the locking piece, that's the uh, location where I was able to get it. Now, one key note, I had to go through my uh, buckets of random bolts and stuff and I had to find a longer 10 millimeter um, bolt to fit in there. And if you see that nut down there, I basically did that to space it out or else if you don't do that, you'll just have a longer bolt and then this whole part will be kinking up like this. So some, some key notes just for you guys to be aware of when doing this, if you so decide to get the same exact um, 10 AN fitting that I got. So this is the setup that I did it. So there you go. Okay, everything's pretty much set up. I have the AN hose routed up to where I want to. Um, there's one key note, uh, make sure on the AN thread, just throw some Teflon tape on it, just to prevent any more possible oil leaks. And then that's pretty much about it. So once everything's set in stone, I'm more likely it's gonna be sitting that cash can up there. And yeah, so. I'm gonna get to that now and then you guys will see the finished product. Okay, everything's pretty much back on. I just gotta torque down the intake manifold bolts to spec. And that's about it guys. So just remember, wherever your old PCV hose used to go to in your intake manifold, make sure to cap that off and just cap off whatever you're not using just if you're going through everything. Make sure to also plug in everything back that you unplug, your map sensor, um, IAT sensors, all that good stuff. Um, as I said, I'm sure most of you guys are not running the setup that I'm running and if you are, you're more likely you've already done a catch can setup. So there's the result. Then it's routed. It's going to the catch can right here, which I mounted it. You guys can mount it wherever you want. I just chose to put it there. I'm more likely it might be going to like a four port um, oil can in the future. Maybe. I don't know yet. 
as you can see that one i'm going to plug that up or if i really wanted to it doesn't really matter i can also just get another breather and just put it there but more than likely he's going to plug it up um because i got the breather on the intake right now because i'm not going to be seeing too much crankcase pressures from here just most of this stuff you need to vent to atmosphere of uh, probably later on in the future there's a company called uh level seven performance they're pretty neat they make um 10 an oil caps for honda valve covers um one will work for a series d series b series all that good stuff it's pretty neat the way it's designed so it's pretty much just an oil cap and it has two an ports so where if you really don't want to you know drill into your valve cover for whatever reason and then there's an option for that pretty neat they're actually having a black friday sale as i film this it's the day after thanksgiving obviously so <laughs> black friday um yeah that's about it guys if you have any questions hit me up in the comments below i'll gladly answer them when i can also if you guys want to contact me dm me on instagram at asian underscore sensation asian spelled with a z i a n underscore sensation z e n s a t i o n that's about it thanks for tuning in guys i'll catch you in the next one